This morning I want to share just for a few moments on self-control, okay? Self-control. And um, this, is, this is really a pickup from last week. Last week we were talking about give the devil no place, remember? Last week we said give the devil no place. We, we talked about that there are, there's a time when we are to be angry. And if we don't get angry about injustices, we're actually falling into sin, okay? And that we need to do something about it right then, that day. Don't let the sun go down upon you, because your wrath, because if you do, you're not going to be as mad about it the next day, and you're going to give another place to the devil. And we talked about the fact that Satan is disarmed, okay? And his only weapon is deception, all right? And, and, and we, we, we talked about the fact that our mind is incredibly powerful. God created us with a mind for, with imagination. And that the power of imagination was given to us so that we can function in faith. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. And it requires an imagination to see what God wants to do and to activate it with the anointing of the Holy Spirit in, in what we call faith, okay? However, we live in a perverted world that's constantly bombarding our minds with lies and the enemy wants to lie to us and the very imagination that God created to, um, gave to us to create faith, could it be the imagination that creates fear, anxiety, and doubt. And that's the reason why Paul said that when speaking of our weapons of our warfare, he said they're mighty through God, okay, to the pulling down or casting down of imaginations and everything that would exalt itself against the knowledge of God and to bring into captivity every thought. So majority of the spiritual warfare is between your two ears, okay? And we do not need to give the enemy uh, territory in our mind or in our soul. Okay, and, and we talked about that unless we are vigilant, because we are being bombarded constantly, day and night, hello, and constantly with information that is not biblical or kingdom-minded, blah, blah, blah. If we are not vigilant about it, we will actually allow the world to train our thinking, and we will actually exercise negative thinking as opposed to positive faith. We said it this way, unless we are vigilant, we will actually end up casting down imaginations of faith instead of casting down imaginations of doubt. We need to start believing our belief and doubting our doubt, right? And, 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 and so uh, we said we do not want to give the enemy any place in our mind. The only thing he can do is lie to us and we need to not give him any ammunition. Don't give him the ammunition, okay? He's defeated. Don't believe his lies, okay? Give no place to the devil. And it's infinitely, unmeasurably easier to keep garbage out of your head than it is to try to clean it up after it gets in there. Amen? Amen? And, and we ended by talking about one of the main things we need to put a guard against is our media, okay? Internet, TV, radio, social media. We need to watch media because most media probably is not healthy. Most media probably is not virtuous, praiseworthy, okay? It's pro probably not truth, but more likely it could be twisted, crude, destructive, subtle lies, okay? Just the pecking away at our head, just peck, 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 peck. Okay, that's the purpose of advertisement, that's the purpose of marketing, is to constantly over and over and over and over and over and over begin to reprogram us through media. And we got to be very careful with what we allow in our homes. It, it, it just amazes me how many Christians entertain themselves with the very things that Jesus died for. He died for... Murder, and yet we want to entertain ourselves with murder mysteries. He, he died, you know, to set those sexually perverted free. We want to see sex scenes. He, he died to clean up our mouth, and yet we allow perversion to be spoken in our living rooms, and many times don't even think anything about it. It just amazes me. And we think it doesn't do anything to us. I'm telling you, it does. You cannot afford one drop of poison to be put into your head. we got to stop giving him a place. Somebody say amen. amen. Today, I want to talk about conversation. we gotta, we got to guard our conversations because conversations, whether they're in the form of a phone call, text, emails, you know, uh, FaceTime, 
uh, again, uh, through face, uh, Facebook, whatever the form is, conversations can pollute our head, conversations can distort our thinking, and conversations can actually give the enemy a place in our soul and in our mind. Can I remind you that the fall of man started with a conversation? And I would propose to you, I would propose to you that it was a continual conversation. I don't think that Satan one time came to him and uh, came to Eve and convinced her in one conversation that God was holding back from her. I think, and I don't have scripture to prove this, but I believe the enemy, this was a conversation he probably had with Eve on numerous occasions. He put it in her head, and he oh, no way, no way. And he came back again. Put it in her head again, put it in her head again, put it in her head again. By the way, everything's not recorded in the scripture, and I'm not making a doctrine out of it. I am telling you, though, that this is the way the enemy works. He'll put it in your head, he'll come back, put it in your head, 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 put it in your head. And before long, you're believing something to be true that is not true at all. Right? And the enemy came and he accused God of not being all good and holding back. And through that conversation, she allowed him to have a foothold that ended up polluting her spirit. Can I tell you as a pastor, if someone was to come to me and say, what's the most destructive sin known to man? I probably would say gossip and slander. I probably would say that gossip and slander does more harm in peace, people's lives than anything else. In fact, I believe that probably gossip and slander in the church could be the most deadly sin. Because, listen, I believe it's more damaging than if the pastor ran off with thousands of dollars. Or if the pastor, you know, ran off with the secretary. That would be horrible, but can I tell you what? That won't do near the damage that gossiping would do and slander. Come on. Because of the power of our words. That's the reason why, listen, our conversations, we need to guard our conversations and not give ourselves to, to slander and not give ourselves to suspicion and, and, and so forth. Hello. Uh, see, uh, conversations will plant seeds into your head that you never thought about before, but because somebody was tainted against somebody else, they can, they can speak something to you and begin to taint your own spirit. Oh, come on now. And, and, and you've got to guard yourself against those conversations. See, and, and can I say this? I believe the most important conversation of all is the one that you speak to yourself. I think self-talk is the one that you've got to really guard against more than any other. The most important conversation, I think, is your self-talk. Um, and David learned how to encourage himself in the Lord. And, and our self-talk is going to determine, ultimately, is going to determine how healthy of a person we are. And a healthy soul is mandatory, is required in order to have a blessed life. You will never enjoy an abundant life if you don't have a healthy soul. John said this, he said, I pray that you would prosper in all things and that you would be in health even or just as your soul prospers. Now your soul is what? Your mind, your will, and your emotions. See, too many times in the church, we want to make everything about spirit. And spirit is very, 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 very important. But can I tell you something? Your soul is equally important. The way you think, your emotions, your will, is extremely important and um, uh, it, re it, it requires to have a healthy soul in order to enjoy the abundant life. See, we're taught, we're taught, listen, we're taught to suppress our feelings, to deny them. In church, how are you doing? Oh, I'm blessed, holy, holy, blah, blah, blah. I was like, shut up. How are you doing? Hello. We, we, we know how to suppress our feelings. We know how to deny truth. And can I tell you something? If you just suppress those feelings, um, it will soon blow up on you. 
How many times do you see on news, how many times do you see on the news, somebody goes off on this rage, you know, this, lately it seems like shooting rages and those type of things, and they talk to the neighbor and go, I can't believe it. I mean, he just seemed like a normal good guy. You know why? Denying, he was denying this emptiness inside of him, this, this, this gnawing inside of him. So your soul is the thermometer that is attached to the thermostat. Your spirit is the thermostat. Your spirit will lead you and help you learn where the abundant life is at. But you've got to listen to the thermometer in order to know that something's wrong and I've got to change the gauge. See that? See, see can I remind you, several years ago I preached a series on living by the Spirit. And, and in it, I, I pointed out that, that we're triune beings just like God. And we normally say body, soul, spirit. That's how we say it. Which is sad because I think it probably shows the emphasis that we put. We put most emphasis on our body how we look and how people see us, then on our soul, how we think, how we feel, our emotions, and then if we have anything left over, we give it to the spirit. But in scripture, it's always the opposite. It's spirit, soul, and body. So that your spirit should be king, or his spirit should be king, your soul should be servant, and your body should be slave. And when it's in that order, blessing flows. But when we let our, when we let, listen, we listen to our soul, and then we take what we're feeling to the Lord, as for wisdom and anointing, and, and, and blessing comes. We listen to our soul, but we don't let our soul tell us what to do. We don't let our soul govern us. We let the Spirit govern us. Spirit is king, not soul. We listen to the soul. We take it to the Lord. And, and you need to understand, let me remind you, Satan does not tempt you in your spirit. He doesn't tempt you in your body. And he doesn't tempt you in your spirit. He tempts you in your soul. When your soul is empty, he'll, he sees a void, he comes in. Your relationship with your spouse is not going well. That's when you are open to the possibility of someone coming in to fill a void that should not be there. Hello. You, 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 there, there's voids in your life. And so, so whenever, whenever I feel this uneasiness in my soul from time to time, I, 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 I understand that, I, let me put it this way, <clears throat> when I was younger, even in ministry, and I would feel this uneasiness in my soul, I always thought I just needed to fast more. I need, I need to work on my spiritual life more. I just need to get spiritually strong. I need to pray more. I need to, I, I, I need to, I need to fast more. I need to read the Bible. I need to, 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 I need to. I didn't realize I was strengthening the spirit, but my soul was the empty part, and the soul is where the enemy tempts me. Sometimes, whenever my soul is depleted, I don't necessarily need to pray more. Maybe I need to go play more. Hello. See, we don't talk about playing in church, do we? It's always pray. God, pray. Pray your guts out. Pray, God. Pray. You know what? Sometimes you just need to go play. You just need to go hang out with a friend and laugh a bit, a little bit. Because laughter, it's good like a medicine, right? I mean, sometimes what you need is you just need to get in a tree and look for little brown critters walking through the snow. I mean, friend, because that will replenish your soul. Are you following what I'm saying? See, see uh, your soul tells you that something's not right. But then you need to go to the Lord and allow him to say, okay, here's what the issue is. This is what you need to deal with. Because sometimes it's not right because you've already allowed the enemy to have a foothold and you're already a uh, dove in sin and, and he needs to cleanse you and there needs to be some repentance. But sometimes, friend, you just need to have a good play. Hello. So, but, but, but see, your health, your finances, your marriage, your business ministry should always be prospering and your life will always reflect the condition of your soul. That's the reason why some people who don't even go to church are abundantly blessed in their health, they're abundantly blessed in their finances, blah, 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 and they don't even believe in Jesus. You know why? They got healthier souls than a lot of Christians do. They got a good self-image, they got a good conscience, they, 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 they think, they think like God wants us to think, good of others, and they, they're believing for good things, and they're 
you know, they're challenging their fears and they're attacking them. Some, many, many sinners are healthier than Christians in their soul. And that's why it's reflected in their life. And we as Christians go, this God pay my time and I go to jail. And I pray, which probably isn't praying. I just complain and I worry and I call that pray. And how come God's not blessing me? I'll tell you how come he's not blessing you. Because your soul is not healthy. I could give amen right there and give an altar call. Come on. See, it's your, if your soul is depleted, your life is going to be depleted. And, and we got to be careful not to allow the enemy to have a foothold in our soul. I'm completely lost. Don't know where I'm at, okay? Oh, here's the problem. Here's the problem, though, okay? Here's the problem. To have a healthy soul is going to require that you have healthy self-talk. To have a healthy soul, you've got to be, have good self-control, and you have to have good self-talk. The problem is, the Bible warns us in the last days, and I personally believe that we're in the last days. Um, the Bible teaches us in the last days that people are going to be without self-control. And I propose to you that we, for the most part, are a people without self-control. We cannot control ourselves anymore. And one of the reasons why is because we, we have not exercised the imagination that God gave to us in the area of, of, of faith. And so we are mentally mush. Let me explain to you what I'm talking about. 50, 60, 70 years ago, put it in whatever number you want to. At the end of the day, the family would all gather around the fireplace. And dad many times would just tell a story. He's making up a story from his imagination. And the wife and the children are all sitting around the fire, listening to dad tell the story while their imagination is being activated and they're having to think about the story and create it in their mind as dad is telling it. And they had very strong, healthy mental capabilities because they were exercising them all the time. What you exercise gets stronger, what you don't exercise gets weaker. We don't have to exercise our imagination at all anymore. Hollywood does it all for us. You don't have to imagination, you don't have to imagine a building blowing up. They're gonna show it to you in a better way than you could ever imagine in your head. You don't have to imagine anything. And so we have become very lazy in our mental capacities. The people are reading less and less. And we're not engaging our mind. And our minds are just playgrounds for the enemy uh, to use against us. Because we no longer know how to cast down those imaginations. We, don't, we no longer know how to even identify them. We just let our mind go mush. And the enemy just plays games, our head games with us constantly. And we wonder why we can't walk in victory. We wonder why every week we got to come back to church and let pastor pump us up again. And we got to pray for you again. And, we gotta, and, and, and we're no longer on offense. We're not taking territory. We're just flat trying to survive. We just got the white flag out. I'm trying to survive. I'm trying to hang on to the end. Hello. See, it's, it's because our imaginations, uh, we have lost all self-control. The, the, the number one issue, keep it there for a few more minutes. The, the number one issue, even in the church, is pornography. We don't want to talk about it, but so many have lost complete control. Why? They allow the enemy to come in, and it's become this deep rut that just tears people's lives apart, people's marriages apart. They, they hate it with everything within them, but they've lost all control. And, 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 and we need a Savior to deliver us from ourselves. Somebody say amen. See, I, I propose to you that most are out of control. Most, most are out of control. They're just puppets in the, de in the devil's hands. And many others think that they're in control. They're self-reliant and they're, they're, they're disciplined. They're proud of their discipline and, and they're self-sufficient. But the truth of the matter, God wants us under control. He wants us to yield to his will. Somebody say amen. amen. See, I propose to you, church, listen, I propose to you that the term self-control that we read about in the Bible can be misleading because when you hear the term self-control, we go, okay, that means I need to be in control of myself. But really in the Bible, it doesn't mean to be in control of yourself. It really means to be under the control of Holy Spirit. 
This is what Romans, this is what Paul said in Romans. He said, you, however, are controlled not by the sinful nature, but you're controlled by the Spirit. So to be self-controlled does not mean that you are in control of yourself. It means that you have yielded to the control of Holy Spirit. In fact, Galatians talks about the fruit of the Spirit, and the fruit of the Spirit, the very last one mentioned, is self-control. It's not, it's the fruit of the Spirit. It, it, the Spirit being in control is what self-control really means. So that I propose to you that probably being Spirit-led, Spirit-anointed, probably means more in reference to our behavior and attitude than it does being able to read somebody's mail. To walk in the Spirit probably has to do more with yielding your soul to the Spirit at all times than it does having the ability to lay hands upon somebody and see them healed. If you look at what the scripture teaches. And, and we need to be people of self-control, especially in these last days. Because lack, lack of self-control leaves somebody open for the enemy to destroy. Amen. Proverbs says, like a city whose walls are broken is a man who lacks self-control. In biblical days... The wall around the city was their number one defense against the enemy coming in and getting a foothold in that city. And if the walls were broke in, the enemy could come in, no problem. Whenever we lose self-control of our and, and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, right, yielding our soul to the Spirit, we open ourselves up and the enemy can just flood in anytime he wants to. Plant lies, deception, frustration, emptiness, bitterness. We're just wide open. In fact, he goes on to say that the enemy will actually destroy those who lack control. Peter said this, be self-controlled and alert because your enemy is prowling around seeking who he can devour. Being, uh, losing our self-control actually opens us up to the enemy. So very quickly, very quickly, let me just give you a couple points. And I'm going to do this fast. Number one, not that fast. <laughs> Number one, take responsibility for your own self, uh, 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 inability, to, uh, a lack of self-control. In other words, repent. Acknowledge you're out of control. James said, listen, when you fall into temptation, don't blame it on the devil. I mean, don't blame it on God. Well, I, I would say don't blame it on the devil either. Because actually you're drawn away by your own desires. We've got to recognize that, that it's, it's self that's the problem. And we need to repent. Secondly, we need to, we need to change our self-talk. We've got to change our self-talk. Because you will not have a healthy soul if you don't have healthy self-talk. I know some people, you know, you've got to constantly be pumping them up and pumping them up. Encourage them, encourage them, encourage them. They're, they're what I call wheelbarrow Christians. They're only good when you're pushing them. They always have, got to have another word, another word of encouragement. Listen, you've got to learn how to speak truth to yourself. You hear me? You will never be healthy until you learn to deal with your self-talk. Number three, you've got to learn how to govern your emotions, which comes as a byproduct of that. If you don't master your emotions, your emotions will master you. By the way, the test of maturity is how you handle your emotions. A child, a child just throws temper, temper tantrums for nothing, right? Why? Because they're a child. They're immature. They just, I don't want, I don't want to make my bed. I don't want to brush my teeth. I don't want to, and they, right? That's immaturity. There's some people, they grow old, but they don't grow up. They're the same way. I don't like this. I don't like that. Listen, you got to learn to control your emotions. When Cain killed, uh, was about to kill Abel, God came to me and said, listen, buddy, I'm telling you right now, Sin is crouching at your door, and you better master it. Because if you don't master it, it's going to master you. We've got, to, we've got to constantly be dying to self and casting down those imaginations. We've got, to, we've got to learn to control our emotions, and you can resist. You can. 
But you can't do it in your own strength. It requires Holy Spirit. Titus said this. Paul said to his son Titus, he said, For the grace of God, say grace. Grace. The grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. And grace teaches us to say no. It's grace that teaches us to say no to the ungodliness and the worldly poison. And it's grace that helps us to live with self-control. It's grace. Grace doesn't allow us to live at lower standards. Grace gives us the ability to live at higher standards. Right? And, and, and it's grace. It's relying upon him uh, to, to take control of our emotions. Which brings me to my last point as Jordan comes. And that's this. We've got to depend upon Holy Spirit. We must have Holy Spirit in control of our daily lives. Look what Paul said to the church at Galatia. He said, I say, live by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. We have to constantly be dying to ourselves, dying to our emotions, casting down those negative thoughts, imaginations. We got to stop giving the enemy a playground in our emotions in our head, in our soul, and say, you do not belong here, Satan, in the name of Jesus. And I submit my soul to the Spirit. See, Peter said it this way. The end of all things is near. Therefore, be clear-minded. What's that? That's your soul. And self-controlled. Why? So you can pray. Church, I believe that there's ever been a day that we need to be vigilant about not allowing the enemy to have a foothold in our life, in our mind, in our emotions. It is today. I believe that the greatest revival, the greatest harvest is upon us, and we need to be walking in the Spirit. Listen, we need to stop living on defense. we got to stop coming to church so we can get healed and pumped up for another week. We need to be working in offense, realizing that greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world we got to be careful with what we listen to, what we watch, conversations we get involved in, conversations we have with ourselves, and allow Holy Spirit to work in us His good pleasure. Amen? So, Father, in Jesus' name, I ask right now, Holy Spirit, I ask that this would be more than just a good message or a good teaching. But, Father, help us. Holy Spirit, we acknowledge our weakness. Some of us in this room, Lord, we are absolutely mentally mush. We, we, we just let everything and anything float through our head. Our self-talk is so condemning. Our confidence is so destroyed because we've allowed the enemy to lie to us and we've allowed conversations to get into our head and destroy our own image and the image that we, the the um, image that we have of others. I ask, Lord, for a cleansing. I ask, Lord, for a realignment in our life. Some of you right now, you need to ask Holy Spirit, realign me, realign me. I bought new tires a year ago. And my, my, my vehicle, this whole suspension system is so messed up. It's going to cost me about $2,000 to get it fixed. I went to go get a, a front end alignment, and they said, we can't do it until we correct your suspension systems. And because I drove with it out of alignment, I'm already needing new tires again. Some of you, you're so stinking wore out, and it's because you're out of alignment. You're out of alignment. You got to get things in order. You got to repent. You got to come underneath the governing of the Holy Spirit. You got to reconstruct your self talk and agree with what God says. And He'll give you brand new tires, friend. Shama Baba Roko Sangatai. That's for some of us here in this room. 
So if that's you, you just ask, Holy Spirit, Lord, I, I, I confess I'm out of alignment. My soul is obviously telling me I'm out of alignment. And I need to get into alignment this morning. And we repent for letting our soul govern. We submit to the Spirit and ask Holy Spirit that you would work in us. Help us to align with you. Help us to have healthy self-talk. Help us not to give place to the enemy that we might walk in great victory. Father, I speak that over individuals. I speak that over marriages. I speak alignment in homes. There's some homes that are out of alignment. You gotta get in alignment, friend. You're afraid to get in alignment because you don't wanna fight. You gotta fight to get things in order. Shama barakia. That's for somebody too. I, I feel the anointing. Holy Spirit, I, I just declare alignment right now in our homes, in our workplaces. Father, I, I just speak divine alignment, Lord, here at Rochester. Lord, where the Spirit of God leads and guides and directs us. It's not by our might or our power, but it's by your Spirit. And Lord, I just speak that and the blessing of the Lord be released as we get in alignment. Father, I declare that in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen, Amen, Amen.